What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm going to be exposing every single PvP exploit that I use for my Dragonite on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, a little bit stuck with your Dragonite and you're struggling and you don't know exactly why, please watch until the end of this video because I guarantee we'll be able to take your Dragonite from a zero to hero in no time flat. So without further ado, let's hop into it fellas. Welcome back guys, before we hop into the bread and butter of this video, please like and sub to the video, comment, hit the bell notification icon. I also do have Twitch and Twitter, believe it or not, links down in the description. And also if you're a big fan of live streams, we do have YouTube memberships. And if you want some one-on-one -on -one PVP coaching, I also do have a Patreon for that if you guys are interested. So let's hop into one of the easiest, most abusive bugs in the entire DK kit, which is going to be the Ash Cloud Stamina Bug. So how this bug works, we're actually going to be abusing one of our passives in the DK kit, okay? This is going to be our Helping Hands passive. Now, as it reads, when you cast a non-stamina costing Earthen Heart ability, you restore essentially a thousand stamina. Well, that seems pretty good. You know, whatever resource you cast, you know, 3,000 match, yeah, you get a thousand stamina back. So how does that equate into an infinite stamina bug? That, that doesn't make any sense. What you can do in the Earthen Heart skill line, if you are a fan of cost reduction, and this will lead into topics later why you should always run cost reduction on your Dragonite, not recovery. We'll delve into that very, very shortly, just on a little tangent. Take a look at my character sheet. I have 628 magic recovery. I sustain perfectly fine, and I'm a vampire. So if you're wanting to see how effective cost reduction actually is, please watch until the end of the video. I'll go massively in depth on how you can abuse that as well. So what you wanna do with Cinder Storm, this will naturally cost you a lot. This will probably cost you, I think like 350 a magic per second to maintain, which is a huge hit on your magic pool, okay? What you can do, you can add cost reduction jewelry enchant. So I have two infused cost reduction, reducing the cost of all my magic abilities by approximately 306. Now, if you want this to be completely free to cast, you can put two on, but ideally you only want one. That'll bring it down to such a low magic cost. It's pretty much negligible anyway. But cost reduction is additive, not multiplicative, meaning when it says it reduces the cost of spells by 306, it reduces the cost of spells by 306. And since Ash Cloud intrinsically by itself costs Magicka over time, which is a very unique ability, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and change my gear around to where you can see that uh, how much it will actually actually cost. So we'll put this guy on we'll also uh, put acuity on. So here's what it would cost originally to maintain 372 magic per second. This equates to almost 700 magic recovery negated, right? This, this would be every two seconds you're wasting 700 stamina. That is an absurdly high cost. The ability is really good, but it's definitely not worth that. But there's an easy work away around it. You just put on cost reduction. And now you have this insanely overpowered ability that costs virtually nothing. It's going to heal you and snare everyone astronomically, okay? In addition to your teammates. And you can use it to proc Earthenheart. Even though it has a zero magicka cost on the spell, you're still going to get a thousand stamina back every single time you cast it. I'll go ahead and roll it out here just for a proof of concept. You can see uh, my natural stamina recovery is pretty low. Every couple seconds, it'll tick for see seven percent there, six percent there, uh, seven percent there. So we'll get back down to about where we started, and then we'll just spam Ice Cloud, Ash Cloud. Now take a look at my stamina; it goes up every single time I cast it, and my magic it's not even dropping. So. If you see me in my live videos and if you see me spamming the crap out of Ash Cloud, this is exactly why. Because if you equate this to forms of stamina recovery, you're getting 1,000 stamina every single second because the GCD or global cooldown, all your abilities is in one second. So if you spam this twice every two seconds, that's 2,000 stamina. And recovery is equated by whatever your resource gain is every two seconds. So essentially, this is an extra 2,000 stamina recovery. And it's going to heal you every single time you drop it as well. So if you can just slot Ash Cloud on your bar and you're a big fan of cost reduction, which you will be at the end of this video, I highly suggest putting on your bar because it's really going to turn your DK up to a whole new level. All right, so exploit number two is Perma Power Lash. All right, so let me explain how Flame Lash works with Power Lash. Now, by default, if you are targeting an unbalanced or stunned enemy, it will turn your Flame Lash into a Power Lash. It will increase the damage by 33% and will also give you a really nice healing over time. 
The problem is, whenever they roll dodge out of the stun or you proc the off balance stats effect, you only get one power lash and that's it. And off balance stats effect has a 20 second cooldown before you can reapply on PvP opponents. But there is a bug to where you keep it up indefinitely for about seven seconds and you can really press your opponent and you never have to come off your front bar whatsoever. So to start off, this is more of an advanced DK rotation that does require a few abilities on your bar. Um, I do cover all this in my coaching sessions, you know, for people who's wanting to like you really get better in duels. Um, you always want to run talents for this because you need some sort of immobilization effect. You will always want to run fossilized if you want to abuse this bug. Otherwise, it does not work with the other morph of fossilized, you know, shattering rocks. And of course you want flame lash so the idea is to get your opponent rooted so this will proc your power lash you can see down the bottom of the screen there that power lash is now able to be proc as long as your opponent is immobilized you can infinitely power lash but that's not where the bug comes in the bug comes in when they actually roll dodge so when they roll dodge this effect obviously goes away so what you want to do if you are quick enough and typically what you want to do in your rotation anyway if you're running talent you'll talent wait for a roll dodge and then catch them in the roll dodge and then once they're fossilized they're rooted again and then in order to move away from you they have to again roll dodge out but if you catch them at just the right time fossilize them and if you're able to get a direct damage source off whether that be a light attack or a power lash or you know whatever the initial hit the burning embers whatever it will proc the off balance status effect indefinitely on your opponent now typically you will get one power lash and this will just go away which is you know not the end of the world it's kind of cool but if you do it in this manner you will infinitely have power lashes for the entire duration of the off balance stats effect and you can see this is really really powerful you're able to keep up the offensive the entire time so you're doing massive amounts of damage and you're also healing throughout the entire duration but but just keep in mind that you can only proc the off balance stats effects on people in pvp once every 20 seconds so use it wisely all right guys so the next exploit in the list is called shading so shading is a term i completely made up make fun of me all you want but essentially it is a way to hide your ability procs and also your set procs just so your opponent does not know what you're doing or what to expect for example when you pop corrosive when you see a dk in corrosive what is your first instinct to do Mine's just to run away, run the fuck away, roll dodge, you know, do whatever. So it's very, very annoying when you're playing as a DK and you pop crows and people just kite you and it's all over. Well, there is a way to completely ignore that. And it's very, very simple. Essentially, you pop your ultimate and you're in your corrosive. Check me out. Big green giant boy here. And you just pop coagulating blood. And now, unless the opponent's paying very, very close attention, they will not see this plume around you. And if they do not listen to the visual cue at the main beginning of the spell, the noise, they will never know you're in corrosive and you're going to hit them like an absolute freight train. Now, this is also very, very handy for other proc sites such as mechanical acuity. How many times have you seen mechanical acuity? The dude's blowing a big, big, shiny blue color. Odds are you don't want to be hit by anything in the next five to ten seconds, okay? So what are you gonna do? You're gonna roll, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. Well, again, with coagulating blood, your shading mechanic, when you pop acuity, which I have on right now, you'll never be none the wiser. So this is a very short trick, but I think every DK should get in the habit of doing this, especially if you're using Proxess or going in right before your burst. Even if you don't need the heal from Coagulating Blood, just go ahead and tap it so you're not telegraphing to your opponent what your next move is, and you'll catch them off guard almost every single time. So next, let's talk about rooting. So roots and ESO are very, very underrated, and they actually do have a small mechanic that most people don't even realize. So on the Dragonite, you have a lot of AoE control. You are the master of the fight, essentially. You are the one who dictates the ebb and flow, the tempo of the fight. So you can do that very, very easily with Talons. Now, yes, Talons is very cool. It roots your opponent, does some damage over time, yada, yada, helps lock down people. But that's not the beauty of it, right? So Talon's rooting effects keeps your character model locked in a certain direction. Now, there is only one way that I know of, or there, there might be a couple of other ways, that you can actually, while you're rooted, turn your character model. You can either medium attack weave while you're rooted and will actually spin your character around to where you're looking, or I think there's a couple of abilities that will also like channeled abilities like Soul Assault, you know, your Kamehameha will actually turn your character model toward a enemy as well. But 
This is very, very helpful against opponents like sorcerers who rely on streak as their means of CCing you or getting away because if you root them, the direction that they're rooted in, that's the only direction that they can streak to. And same goes for the magical warden or stamina warden with their beetles, for example. If they're trying to hit you with a beetle combo, you see them punch the ground, a good rule of thumb is just count the two, root their ass, and then because they're rooted, they cannot swing their character mall around to actually hit you with beetles. So that's a very, very good way to enter interrupt your opponent's burst instead of CCing them you can just root them essentially if you're really good on your timings and it will help you mitigate a lot a lot of damage and in addition to all of the pros that come from towns and rooting people it's very good to flank your opponent as well as much chaos and as much camera movement you can cause your opponent to do you will make them be less efficient for example if they're not able to target you literally every single global cooldown you're essentially mitigating damage because they're losing time at which they could be doing damage to you or even healing themselves so if you're able to dance in and out of your opponent you know phasing this is a very very strong tactic to just be more efficient on the battlefield and i don't see a lot of dks of using this quite enough so you got someone rooted just flank them really piss off your opponent really make them hate dks even more than they already do well guys if you made it to the end i did say the best tip for last and that is going to be abusing the battle roar passive now unlike other classes in the elder scrolls online the Dragonite is the only class that has a way to regain your resources other than magic recovery or some or stamina recovery or some other set like Engine Guardian to give you your resources back. So let me go ahead and explain what the Battle Roar passive is. Whenever you cast an ultimate ability, you restore 51 health, 50 magic, and 50 stamina per ultimate consumed. Now, for example, if your Dawnbreaker costs 125 and you have 250 ultimate, you're actually getting resources back from that 250 ultimate. Now, all of this is going to kind of come full circle what I mentioned at the beginning of the video about cost reduction and how after seeing this you're going to 100% slap cost reduction on all of your Dragonite builds okay so the idea with this passive if you want to abuse it like I do I will go ahead and reiterate my magic recovery is 628 with vampirism stage 3 so the idea is to make your ability so cheap to cast that you actually generate enough ultimate to replenish what resources you consume. So the cheaper you can make your spells cast, the more efficient your resource sustained is going to be with the battle or passive. So on your Dragonite, you want to include as much ultimate regeneration as physically possible, whether it be decisive traits, whether it be blood spawn, which I run on all my Dragonite builds, or even getting access to minor heroism with heroism potions such you can make those by dragon's blood dragon's rum and columbine by the way quite expensive but an absolute necessity on the dk if you want to play it at a super high level especially in one vxing now this is why the dragon knight meta back when open soul was first launched was so freaking powerful because because of that mythic when you run minor heroism potions you had access to minor heroism and major heroism at the exact same time so TLDR of that meta is that it was literally impossible for you to use more resources than you're actually generating their battle war passes because of all of the ultimate regeneration the DKs had on their builds at the time. And let me just go ahead and reiterate like all the builds running 2k magic recovery, 3k magic recovery on your Dragon Knights, you're doing it wrong, you're losing out on a lot of extra damage that you could not be putting into your sustain. So let me explain. So we'll go ahead and take a look at our jewelry here. As I said at the beginning, cost reduction is additive, not multiplicative. So every single spell you cast is going to save you 306 magicka or stamina. It doesn't matter the, the, the cost reduction. Every single second. So every ability has a one second global cooldown. So two seconds, you're effectively saving 600 magicka. If you compare that to recovery, for example, you have 250 magic recovery on a jewelry instead of the 306 cost reduction jewelry, okay? What magic recovery means is every two seconds you are generating 255 magicka, okay? So what are you generating every one second? Well, it's about half of that. It's going to be about 122.5 magicka per second. Compare that to an infused cost reduction. So with recovery, you're only generating or saving 125, I, I don't know, magica, we can say it that way, but cost reduction is actually saving you 306 per second. So cost reduction is way more than double 
doubly more effective in terms of raw stat values than when it comes to recovery. So if you truly want to maximize your sustain and maximize the damage on your build, just stack into cost reduction and ultimate regeneration. That is your sustain. Don't worry about magic recovery whatsoever. You're not going to need it. Trust me. Once you start going down this route and start making builds revolve around cost reduction and ultimate regeneration, it's going to put your DK on a whole nother level, guys. I mean that. Like, I really hope from this video, you take this to heart and you actually try it out for yourself. Okay. And another little bonus tip I want to toss at the end. If you're not sure where to start with how much cost reduction you're actually going to need for your build if you're running four or more medium or heavy armor it's a good idea to have two infused cost reductions now if you're running four or more light armor pieces it's a good idea to have one infused cost reduction now i am a vampire because i'm a vampire i do have to heavy attack a little bit more often than i would like but the passes from the undeath is way too good to pass up give it a shot if you like it let me know down in the comments whether it helped or not all right, guys, that about does it for the video. If you found any information at all helpful in this video, I'd really appreciate a like and sub. And please hit the notification icon if you haven't already so you're notified for all my live streams when I go live because YouTube is notorious for not notifying people, okay? Also, follow me on Twitch and Twitter. I do stream on there occasionally as well. And if you want to help support the channel, I do have YouTube memberships. You get access to a bunch of Discord channels, emotes, all kinds of cool things to spam and live chat. And if you want one-on-one -on -one PvP coaching or if you really want to help support the channel, I also do have a Patreon. Um, all the details are there. All the links are down in the description below. And yeah, guys, hopefully you guys had a good Merry Christmas, a good New Year's. So hopefully 2023 is off to a great start for you guys. I wish you all the best. It's good to be back. This is Horcrux signing out. Peace. <laughs>